Okay, welcome everyone again. Uh, thank you for being here. This is Tweak Recipes, making Drupal 8 render the markup that you want. My name is Mauricio Dinarte. I am known as Dinarcon in Drupal.org, Twitter, and pretty much everywhere on the internet. I am from Nicaragua. Uh, I also one of the organizers of the local Drupal community. I work for a company called Agaric. We are a distributed team, pretty much like in Europe and America. And I am really passionate about teaching, and very soon um, I, I will start this personal project about teaching Drupal uh, in different languages. So I got some stickers on the table if you want to grab some. And before going any further, I would like to know a little bit about you. So if you can raise your hand when I ask these questions. Have you ever downloaded and configured a Drupal contributed theme no matter what version? So most people. How about creating a custom theme no matter the version? Oh well, good. How about creating a soup theme? A lot of people, good. Have you worked with Tweak either in Drupal or Symfony or another project? Excellent. And have you created a Drupal 8 theme? Wow, okay. Well, maybe you will teach me some lessons too. Um, so the session is uh, from the basics, uh, building up knowledge. So at the beginning, there will be a lot of basic concepts because most of you already know this. Uh, I will try to you know, not spend a lot of time in that. And I want you uh, to remember this. The objective of the session is not just have you to give you a piece of code that you can copy and paste and just magically work. My, my objective is that you understand how the different pieces interact together so that you can you know, create your own solutions. And Leah Bero, author of CSS Secrets, put it, put it in a very good way. Um, understanding the process of finding a solution is far more valuable than the solution itself. And we are looking for that, for understanding the process to find the solution. So uh, we're going to start talking about Tweak. Tweak, uh, as, as you may know, is a PHP project, uh, a templating engine. It comes from the Symfony uh, ecosystem and we adopted it for Drupal 8. When working with Tweak and in particular with Drupal 8 themes, we're going to interact with a lot of templates. A template is basically HTML markup with some placeholders that will be dynamically um, um, modified. And in the template, you can embed CSS, JavaScript, and images as needed. So this is an example of a tweak template. And as you can see, it's basically an HTML skeleton with the placeholders. And you can use tweak outside of Drupal. Again, this is not specific to Drupal. And some basics. Uh, we're going to cover Tweak syntax and see some examples of how Tweak is used in Drupal core to explain the different concepts. So for the very basics, uh, if you want to print anything, you use the print something syntax, which is two curly brackets. Uh, if you want to do something like evaluate a condition on go where a loop, you use the do something syntax, which is curly bracket percent sign. And if you want to add a comment in your Tweak template, you use curly bracket and a hashtag. So I will be saying print something and do something a lot while explaining the template. So I just want to set the stage about that, that, the vocabulary that, that I will be using. Now, in Drupal 8, uh, most of the time we're going to use one syntax to print variables. And it is the dot notation, which we see here in line number one. Uh, Tweak provides other mechanisms like line two and three in which we can use a square bracket notation or the attribute function. But we're going to see just in a moment why 99% of the time we will want to use the dot notation. But before, before uh, doing that, I want to tell you when you cannot use it. So if the variable that you want to print start with a hash sign, you cannot use the dot notation. So for example, in line number six, uh, we have a variable called form. Inside that one, another variable called operator, and inside that one, hash, sign, and type. Because you know the, that name starts with a hash sign, you cannot use the dot notation. Another 
a scenario where you cannot use the dot notation is when the variable name has some dash in, uh, as part of the name because Twig will think that this is a arithmetic operation and it will actually try to perform a subtraction. So in that case, um, you cannot use the dot notation. These two other options are rarely used. In fact, the, the square bracket notation appears about five times in Drupal core at all, and the uh, attribute function, it doesn't appear at all. But because using data attributes is very common nowadays, uh, if you have to do it, this is how you, how, you, you, how you go about it. Now, why is the dot notation so useful? Because it is going to give, uh, to do a lot of evaluations for you. In the past, the themer had to know the underlying that structure. Is this an array? Is this an object? And so on. We tweak now in Drupal 8, that is abstracted, making the life easier for the themer. And the uh, dot notation is going to perform all of these checks for you and return whatever, you know, returns a value. Everything except line number 15 is tweaked by itself. Uh, in Drupal 8, we add a little bit of more magic, if you will, to tweak. And in the case of the dot notation, we add a final check before returning nothing. And that is, if this is a render array, if the variable that I am trying to print is a render array, call automatically the render function and return whatever, you know, comes from that. Another difference between Drupal 7 and 8 when theming is that in the past, we, the recommended way to add classes to the template was using preprocess functions. Uh, in Drupal 8, it is recommended now to do it in, directly in the template because for one, the themer will know which classes are available right away and also because there are the tools and mechanisms to do it. For example, here uh, we are using the set uh, keyword to define a variable, and that variable is going to be an array of classes that then we're going, will going to be added to, to an to a HTML tag. One thing to note is that when you're working with Tweak, you have all the functionality available for you. So in this case, I am building an array dynamically, so sometimes, depending on the conditions, uh, the, element, the, the number of elements will be different. So in line number four, for example, we are concatenating strings. We are doing a, uh, like sanity checks when before printing the variable names. We are evaluating if the node in this case is promoter or is sticky, and if, if that is the case, add some classes. And we can do a lot of stuff, uh, you know, anything that Twig provides in the template. And when we have the, our, the array of classes, we just call the attribute object. It has a add class method. We pass the array, and then we will get, you know, the classes as we want them. Twig also has the concept of filters. So filters are used to modify something before it is being printed. Uh, the way that you work with a filter is you pass either a variable or a string or some other scalar like a, a number and then the pipe symbol, and then the name of the filter. So for example, in line number two, we are transforming a text to uppercase. Filters can also be applied uh, using a, di a different syntax, like in no line number five and seven. So if you want to apply the same filter to multiple lines, instead of doing it like one by one, you can just use the do something syntax, use the filter keyword, and then the name of the filter and then you can have as many lines as needed, uh, and the filter is going to be applied. Also, um, filters can be concatenated or chained. That means the result, the result of one filter uh, is going to be sent to the next one. So in this case, we have a variable uh, with the name of name. We strip the tags, and the result of that, we make it uppercase. And Filters uh, can also receive arguments, and this is not a security, you know, focus session, but just for you to know, Tweak Core provides a filter called Join. In Drupal, we provide one called Safe Join. So there are some security implications related to that, and there is actually an issue to bring the changes that we're suggesting upstream, 
But any time that you have to do joining uh, in a Twig template in Drupal 8, use safe join. So, and in, in the case of safe join, it receives a parameter that is going to be, you know, what is going to be the separator between the different elements. And talking about parameters, uh, they can be optional, and if you don't provide them, you will get some defaults provided by Twig. Uh, so, for example, the number format, you can define the decimal places, how many decimal places you want, the decimal point separator, the thousand separator, and so on. But if you don't provide, Twig will use some defaults for you. Uh, we also have functions. Uh, in this case, functions uh, are used in many different ways. In line number two, we're using a function to print a value directly in the template. In line number five through seven, uh, we're using the range function to generate an array, and then we are using the for loop syntax to do something with that array. And in line number 10, this is probably the more, more interesting example. In contrast to filters where the output is right away, like in the template where you put the filter, it is going to be printed right away. In this case, with the attach library function, we are actually adding CSS to the header and JavaScript to the footer. So when you use a function, the result of, of what is going to be output is not necessarily right away in the template. In here, we are modifying the whole Drupal page. And there are some uh, uh, filters and functions specific to Drupal, and you can find them on those links. We also have tests. So tests are usually um, used when you want to evaluate a condition. In this case, uh, these are examples mostly from Drupal core. Uh, if the variable Q, which in Drupal represents the query string parameters, is empty or is not empty, if a label, um, if the value of a label is in one of this array, if uh, a variable is not empty, if a number is odd and or even, there are many options. Technically speaking, the only test in this slide is the word odd. The word is, not, in, or, those are called operators, but they are usually used in the context of tests, so I just grouped them together, together here. And this is a summary of like all the three things that we, we just saw. So a filter requires an expression preceding, you know, some text, some variable. They can receive arguments, and the result of applying the filter is always a scalar that is going to be printed right away. With functions, they do not require an expression preceding them. They can receive arguments, and the return value is mixed. It can be something to print right away, like a number or a string, or in the case of the attached library, uh, it is something that modifies the whole page. And in the case of test, uh, they require an expression preceding them, they can receive arguments, and the return value is always going to be a Boolean, either a yes or no. Now, uh, another example from core about control structures. So, when you save a node in Drupal, you get a message, this node has been saved successfully. So those messages, uh, this is the way that core prints them. There is a variable called messages, which is an array, and we apply the length filter. If, it is, if the value is more than one, we print them as a list. Otherwise, we print them you know, just like the text itself. Uh, this is the length filter is another example of how we're making things easier for themers. Because in the past, uh, if the variable was an, an, an array, you have to use a PHP function to count how many elements are in the array. If the variable was a string, you have to use a different PHP function to, how, to count how many characters are in the string. We tweak, you know, the themer doesn't need to know about the underlying data structure. You apply the filter and it will give you sensible defaults. Um, so in this case, we have an if condition and inside a for loop. This is another example uh, for printing the breadcrumb. So this is like, uh, when you go to a page, you have like home, and then the section, and then the title of the page. So that is called a breadcrumb. Uh, this is how Drupal prints them. You get breadcrumb as an array, and you use a for loop to iterate over, over each element. And then for each element, 
it is also like an, an structure. Does that element has a URL? If so, print an A tag, an a, uh, which is a link tag. Otherwise, just print the text. Now, let's talk about Drupal templates. Drupal templates are like onions. And if you saw the movie, you will guess uh, why. Because they come in layers. So we want, when we want to print something on a Drupal website, we will be interacting with a lot of templates at the same time. Let's give an example. Uh, we have a blog section in our website. And we have on the sidebar uh, a blog that shows more articles written by the same author. So to print that, Drupal will have at least to interact with five different layers of template. One is the theme region, because every blog needs to be placed in a theme region. Then you have the blog itself. Then, let, because this is a listing, let's assume that we build the blog using views. The view is showing different nodes, nodes created by the same author. And then for each node, we might pr print the title, we might print the tags, an image, and so on. So we are printing individual fields. So it is very important to understand that Drupal will be working in layers to print whatever you want. And you need to know exactly in which layer you're dealing with to modify Drupal as, as you need. And you know, I just gave one example, but in just to build one Drupal page, you can actually interact with 100 or 200 or even more templates. So it might be overwhelming, and we are going to see some techniques to identify which one of all of those templates are the ones that you need to modify and how to do it. So um, again, in Drupal, uh, we work with templates and in different layers. So one template we'll call the other. The outermost template in Drupal is called html.html.tweak. So every template is going to end with html.tweak, and in this case, this is the HTML template. Five lines uh, from the bottom to the top, we see that we're printing something. It says print page. When, we, uh, when that line is evaluated, we are actually calling the next template in the hierarchy, which is the page template. In the page template, we're going to see that uh, we'll, we will be printing page dot something. Like in this case, page dot primary menu, page dot secondary menu, page dot breadcrumb, and so on. So those page dot something are the theme regions available for you. So if you ever want to know what regions are available in your template, in your theme, you can see the page template and look for page dot, and those are the regions. Each of these is, is going to call a region template, which is actually really simple. It, you just check, is there any content to print within this region? If there is one, you call the block template, Let's assume that we're printing a node. So the block template will call the node template, and you can continue going on and on you know, to the field level, or you can skip some of these layers. For example, if you're printing a user, or if you're printing a view, and so on. The thing is that you will be interacting with a lot of different things. Now, why so many templates, Drupal? Well, you know, Drupal is very flexible, but with flexibility, you know, we also get some complexity. Uh, Drupal core comes with about six or seven themes, one of which is called stable. So stable alone has 159 templates. So you know, it's, it's, it might get complicated to find which is the right to, to, to modify. And I started giving this presentation a little bit over a year ago, and that actually, that number has actually been increasing over time. So I don't know when, if it's going to be 200 or more at some point, but it has never gone, gone down. So when you have so many templates, what do you do? So to override Drupal markups, this is, uh, we're going to see an example of, of how to do it. So let's say that we are installing Bartik, you know, a, a fresh Drupal installation with Bartik. When we create an article, we get a tagline that says, submitted by the author, on, and then the date. Let's say that we want to change the format of, of how the date is presented. This is the recipe. This is how you were going to do it. Uh, you will enable theme debug. 
uh, you are going to locate the proper template to modify. You are going to copy over the template to your theme. If needed, you are going to use file name suggestions. Then you make your changes, you clear the cache, and you rinse and repeat. So you do this process over and over till you get the results that you want. And it is very important at the end to disable theme debug or you might get some weird stuff happen. So first step, uh, enabling theme debug. In those links you can find documentation on how to do it, but basically it's finding the services that YML file in your installation and modifying some uh, parameters there. Once you do that, uh, Drupal uh, will be, you know, working as usual, but if you inspect the source code of a page, now you will get HTML comments uh, with very useful information. So you get three different pieces of information when you enable theme debug. Going from top to bottom, uh, from bottom to top, uh, where it says begin output, you see exactly which template it's being used. So that is the first step. You need to locate what is the template being used. So you, know, you already know it is in the back Bartik theme, in the templates folder, and it is the node template. Another thing that you get, uh, remember that there are different layers, views, page, users, and so on. What it says, theme hook node, that means we're dealing with a node here. If it said theme hook user, we're dealing with a user. Field, we're dealing with a field and so on. So that's how you know what you're dealing with at this, at this level. And then we get the file name suggestions. So for example, in the case of a node in Drupal, you might want to modify how all the nodes in the system are presented, but maybe uh, instead of doing that, you only want to modify the articles. So uh, if you want to modify only one content type, how one content type is presented, you can use node, dash dash and then the machine name of the content type, in this case article. And then the modifications to the template will apply only to articles and basic pages and any other content type will remain unchanged. You can also apply file name suggestion for view modes. So maybe you might, you might have heard about teasers or full content, those are view modes. So you can also apply file name suggestion based on that. And you can combine both uh, content type and, and view mode. Uh, in that link, in the first one, you can get a list of uh, different template suggestions that you can use. Unfortunately, there is a bug in Drupal core that not all the template suggestions are available. Uh, I checked today and it is actually in RTBC, which means that it should be available very soon. But while that happens, for example, if you're dealing with views, one single view actually provides several templates. And in that link below, you can see all the templates that abuse provides. Okay, back to the example. We want to modify the tagline. So we already know which uh, template to, uh, to modify. And if we inspect the template in line number 42, we actually see where this thing is being printed. And if we go a little bit up in the same file, in lines 26 and 27, we see that we have these two variables, uh, date and author name. And in the case of the date, it says theme creation date field. And it might not uh, be apparent, but we actually have a problem here. In Drupal 8, uh, it is not recommended to pass HTML directly to the template it is better to pass render arrays. So in Drupal 7, we, after the pre-process uh, layer, we had a process layer that converted the render arrays to HTML strings, and that was passed to the template. In Drupal 8, we have changed that. Now we expect to receive uh, render arrays, because if we receive render arrays, it will be easier to modify them in the template. If we receive an HTML string, we will have to apply regular expressions to make any change, and it is going to be really hard to do. So, because it, is, it says theme, that means uh, HTML is, uh, markup, and if we want to change it, we will have to use regular expressions. So we will find a different way to do this. And uh, just for you to know, this is actually pretty rare. Drupal core, for the most part, 
uh, gives you render arrays. But these two variables, uh, they are HTML strings, and in a moment I will explain why. So, because we cannot use those variables, let's see if the templates give me another one that I could use. And indeed, in line number 10, I see that I have node.getCreatedTime, and this returns the node creation timestamp, like a Unix timestamp. So I can use that in addition with a date filter, uh, and then passing some parameters to modify, to make the change that I need. So now that I know the file and the, and the variables that I have available, I copy over the file to my theme, and I reveal the cache for, for Drupal to pick the new template, and I make the change. So in this case, uh, in line number 94, I set a variable, you know, node, created time, uh, filter date with some parameters. And then I use that variable to print the, the, the string. Now, for the most part, you don't need to assign variables and then print them. Usually you can print the variables directly, but we cannot do that. And we cannot do that for the same reason that Drupal cannot pass render arrays uh, in, in these cases. When you, in here in line number 95, we are inside trans and entrance tags. Those are used for translations. And translation tags in Drupal 8 only work with scalar values. That means either strings, numbers, integers, or number floats. If you, if you try to pass node.createTime uh, pipe date, the filter will not be applied. Filters and functions do not apply within the trans and entrance. So that is why Drupal doesn't do it, and that is why we are required to have an extra variable. But for the most part, you just directly print whatever you need. And now we get the results that we want. Now, if you were paying very close attention, in the node template, the comment said that we will use node.getCreatedTime with parentheses. But in my, in my example, I use node.createTime. And this is probably an you know, over, over uh, use of Twix syntax, uh, but the, I just want to show that Twix is very flexible and it will actually try to do a lot of things. So all those three lines at the bottom, they are equivalent. Drupal, uh, Twix will try to look for a get method and, uh, and, and call the method. So all of those are available for you and they, they are equivalent. Now, a word of warning. This was for demonstration purposes only. There are many reasons not to do what I just did. One, I took the template from, from Bartik, and you are never supposed to sub, sub theme from Bartik. In Drupal 8, you either choose stable or classy as your base theme uh, from the ones that Core provides. At the end of the slide deck, there is a presentation, a link to a presentation where you can learn more about this. Another reason why you might not use this technique is because when using the date filter, uh, the server will return the language of the server itself. So in, if the server is in English, you will get the strings in English. But if you are working on a multilingual site, then you don't get the proper translations. So for those cases, there are uh, modules. One of them is called uh, Bamboo Tweak. We have, I have a, a, li a list of resources at the end that actually allows you to pass the Unix timestamp, but then apply the interna 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 internationalization <laughs> Uh, process that Drupal does. Okay, now we're going to go to the recipes themselves, but before one last uh, recommendation. When working uh, in a node template, we have two very important variables. One is called content and the other one is called node, and they serve a very different purpose. So the content variable has render arrays. As I said before, in Drupal 8, the recommendation is to pass render arrays to the template. Uh, for all the fields defined in, a, in the Manage Display section. So the Manage Display section is how you configure the view modes for your nodes, and the content variable is going to, to have the render arrays as you configure the view modes. And you also had the node variable, which is the node object itself. As, as you remember in the example, we used that variable to get that creation timestamp. That is not a field, that is part of the node itself. 
But in addition to those metadata, you have the field values and any reference entity as a store in the database. For example, for a Boolean field, you will have either a one or a zero. So there will be some cases where using the node variable is actually very useful. And in that link, you can find a blog post by Berdir, a high profile Drupal contributor that explains a little bit more about this, and in particular, how to work with the node variable with reference entities. Let's say that you have one node that calls a user, and you want to check one value of one field value of that user. So you can, do, you can change this stuff using the node variable. So the first recipe, how can I pass information from Drupal to Tweak, or basically from the back end to the front end? So uh, in every theme, you will have a, a file called, you know, the name of or your theme called theme. So you will have to modify that file. Then you need to implement a pre-process hook. And in this case, we see lowercase hook and uppercase hook. So the lowercase hook is going to be replaced by, by your theme name. And the uppercase hook is going to be replaced for whatever layer you are interacting with. Remember when we enable theme debug, it says theme hook node. So that, that is what you're going to replace the uppercase hook. And then you, re, you, you receive a, an array of variables. Uh, that is a key value array. The keys are going to become the variables available inside the tweak template. You make all the changes, you can add, you can remove, you can you know, modify, and then you simply print the variables in the template. So uh, le this is an example. Let's say that I have a node and I have an image field in that node, but I want to print in a different region that image. I want to put it somewhere else. So how do I do that? To modify the whole page, I use the, uh, the page preprocess. So in this case, Nicaragua is the name of my theme, underscore preprocess, and then underscores what theme hook I am dealing with. In this case, page. When you are visiting a, a, a Drupal node, you will get a variable called node. So you check if that variable exists, and then I am doing an extra check for the bundle. The bundle in Drupal is the content type. So if this is, if, if this is a node of content type page, which is basic page, then I want to do something. And that something is, I am going to create two new uh, array keys. Those two array keys will become variables in the tweak template. And what is going to be stored in those, in those array keys? I look for variable node, so get me the node, then get field image and field teaser. Those are two fields inside the node. And then it's, I call view full. Full there represents the full view mode. So if you want to print a variable using the configuration in the full view mode, you, you can use that. You can also change that for teaser or for any other view mode. And then you are going to be populating these variables with render arrays as configured in the full, teaser, or whatever view mode you are using. And once you have those variables available in your template, you simply print them. Now, let's analyze for a moment line number three and line number five. It's the same variable, but in line number three, I am calling the render uh, filter. Why do I have to do that? Remember that, that when we use the dot notation, Drupal will call render automatically for you. In this case, uh, we don't have a dot, but the same logic applies. When you print a variable, Drupal will try to verify if it is a render array, and if so, uh, it will, you know, it will call the render function. In line number three, we are forced to do it because this automatic rendering only happens when you print something. If you are doing something, it doesn't happen, so we have to do it manually. And the reason that we do it here is because we don't want to print this markup if there is no value for that variable. So the value, the, the content, the HTML is going to be printed if we actually have a cover title. And again, uh, Render only is called with the print something syntax. In a do something thing, syntax, you have to explicitly call render yourself. Another example, how do I conditionally render field values based on the content of other field values? Let's say that I have a Boolean field in my node, 
And depending on that, you know, if it is yes or no, I print something else, some other fields inside the same node. So in this case, I am using the node variable because again, this will give you the raw database storage. So node, field lightbox, in this case, field lightbox is the Boolean field, and then I get the value. And here it will return either zero or one, and the if condition is going to be evaluated, and if it evaluates to true, I print the video in this case. Uh, recipe number three, how can I render an image field as a background image? So this recipe applies from Drupal 8.3 onwards. In the past, we needed to use an extra module, but because we are about to release Drupal 8.4, I don't see the need to explain the old method. And in the new method is, uh, when you go to the manage display configuration, you know, for the view mode, you now have a new formatter that says URL to image for the image field. And then you simply render the, the, the variable itself. So this is like how you do it. Uh, this is the manage display section. You hide the label, you use the URL to image format, and optionally, you can define which image style you want to use. And with this, Drupal will give you the, the link directly to the image file. And then you just print the image. Uh, in this case, I am using uh, a style tag with background image, and then I print the image content that field horizontal image. Uh, in line number two, you, you can check that I am using the spaceless operator. And why is that? You know that you know, the Drupal community is very friendly. Drupal is you know, very, it gives you a lot of stuff. And sometimes it gives you stuff that you don't need. So when you print a variable in Drupal, it will actually give you white spaces before and after. And if you have white spaces in a URL uh, attribute for, for CSS, that is actually invalid, so it will not work. So what you have to do, you have to remove the white space. And to do it, you use the spaceless operator. So anything that you put between spaceless, all the white space between tags is going to be removed. And with that, we, got, we get valid CSS, and we get our image field as a background image inside the tweak template. Uh, something similar, if you want, uh, for example, to have a, a SVG file upload, and then use that as, a back, as an image, uh, source file. So in this case, I configure the file field to hide the label and show the URL to file, and the same stuff, like in, I have an image tag, I have the source attribute, use the spaceless operator to remove the white space that Drupal will give me, and print the content as configured in the, in the view mode. Um, this is another example. Let's say that you have an entity reference field and you want to use the destination of that entity reference field as a href, href attribute in a link tag. Let's say that in this content type, you have an image, but you want to use the link of the entity reference field uh, as the href for the image. So how do you do that? Uh, in this case, featured content is the entity reference field. You hide the label you make the entity reference field to point to the, to the entity, and then you need to use a file name suggestion to print that field specifically. In this case, I am printing a field inside a node. The field is called feature image content, and in particular, when using the feature view mode. And then, you know, just print the URL. I don't want to print anything other than the URL. And once you do that, it's the same recipe over and over. You just like, you have an H tag, an href attribute, print the content of the, of the URL, and then use a spaceless to remove the white spaces. And with that, you have your A tag, and inside your A tag, you can put an image or whatever other field that you might need. And uh, last example, this is actually, I'm not going to go in deep. Uh, there are some things that we still need to do for make the theme layer more usable for themers. So 
someone was uh, someone asked uh, in Slack once that they wanted to print a link to a node, and how did they do it? So maybe this doesn't make any sense, and I understand it's really complicated. Uh, you have to use a URL uh, function that expects to receive a Symfony route inside Drupal. I mean, why do a themer needs to know about routes in Drupal? And then those routes expect certain parameters. So if you ever have to do it, uh, this is how you do it. And actually, Drupal console is your friend. With Drupal console, you can look for all the routes. And when you know the route in particular, you can issue another command to see what parameters this route expects. So again, this is something that we can improve in Drupal, but as of today, that's how, we, how, we, how you do it. Now, what we have covered so far, it's Drupal core and tweak core. But as you can imagine, uh, there are, you know, we, we like to make things easier for, for the front end developers, and we have a, a huge ecosystem of contributed modules to extend tweak. So, as I said before, Bamboo Tweak, and there are many. Um, uh, some of these are very popular, others are not that popular, but if you ever need one of their functionality, they are available. And I am certain that there are more modules that I have on the slide, I just I'm not aware of them. So if you want to learn more about Tweak in general, I recommend this session by Javier Aguiluz, which is part of the uh, Symfony team from two years ago, it's still relevant. If you want to learn how, why using Bartik is a bad idea, you know, using it as a, as a sub theme, you can see this other session by Daryl Norris from Twin Cities last year. And if you need help, you can jump into either IRC or Slack. Those are the, the resources. And just before going to the questions, if the slide deck is already available in that URL, you can, uh, you know, you can have it ready. And please rate this session. I would really love to have your feedback. And I invite you to the sprints on Friday. So the best way to learn is by doing. Actually, I am a back-end developer. I am not a themer. I am not a front-end developer. Once I was tasked to create a theme in Drupal 8, and I had no idea how to do it. So it was a long and somewhat painful process. And this session is actually the result of that first exercise. And because it was difficult for me, I wanted to you know, save other people a little bit of time, and that's why I am here today. So come and learn. Thank you very much. So if there are questions, you can come to the mic. Hi. In terms of performance, is it okay to go deeper in an array or a object to get a value in a twig or in a, temp in a preprocess? So, uh, question about performance. Yeah. I know that in twig itself, uh, the dot notation, because it has to do a lot of checks, it is, you know, there is a performance hit there, but it is negligible for the most part. And one thing to remember is that you need to uh, focus on maintainability. You know, how easy is to maintain this theme or if it is easy to understand. You can do a lot of performance, but uh, for performance improvements, but unless you are actually certain that it is a problem, don't do it. My recommendation there is actually, uh, there is a C extension for tweak for the dot notation and installing that will actually improve how that works. In terms of doing in a preprocess function, Twig is actually compiled to PHP, so I don't think there will be a lot of difference there. Okay, thank you. You're thank you for the good presentation. On slide 36, where you're showing how to set up the Twig debug, mm -hmm. you have cache set to true. Mm -hmm. That means you have to manually each time clear the cache. Mm -hmm. Ideally, for a development site, you want to set that to false. That way it doesn't cache it, and every change you make then is automatically right there. Yes. It's just a comment. Yes, so uh, one, one observation is about the caching, and yes, I, I leave it as true, and the reason is because even though on, during development you, you want, you know, not have to reveal the cache every time, on a real website you will have that turned on. 
And sometimes, you know, things slip and you get unexpected results when you have cache disabled versus having cache enabled. So at the beginning, it was recommended to turn cache off. Now we just leave it on. And there are, you know, there are arguments and issues about that. I just followed the recommendation in the slide deck. And one example, you know, of having unexpected behavior, uh, remember that I enabled thin debug and I said that you should disable thin debug at the end. And the reason is when we are using, you know, we're, when we are printing variables as CSS uh, attributes, then if we have thin debug enabled, in addition to the value itself, we get the HTML comments for the fields. You know, every variable at, at some point might be a field and you will get the HTML comment for that. And that will render the whole thing, you know, invalid. So that's why it is better to work as if you were in production. So when you are done with your changes, you disable theme debug and you try with that. Because, you know, that, that might happen. I might have a, oh, first off, a great presentation. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I might have a tip when you enable uh, the template suggestions, uh, the helper, the uh, debug function. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty annoying because your entire uh, web developer tool gets filled with these suggestions and it's right. pretty hard to see the structure. <coughs> there is a Chrome extension, a Drupal template helper, yes. that you can install. It needs a little bit of work to get it working. You need to uh, enable experimental settings and enable custom theme in Chrome. But then it uh, separates those comments in a, a separate tab in your Chrome, so you can quickly copy the suggestion and find it uh, right. with PHP Storm or whatever your yeah. idea. Can you repeat the name of the? Uh, it's Drupal Template Helper. Uh, okay, it's good. Uh, so yeah, the Drupal Template for Chrome, it's actually a helper for you know, working with the template suggestions. Yeah, thank you. It makes it uh, a lot cleaner. Thank you. Well, uh, any other question? Oh, one more. Um, Twig, uh, when you have a lot of Twig statements or functions or filters used in your template, uh, it can get quite, uh, uh, how do you say that? cluttered, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the purpose of Twig, as I understand it, is just to remove the, uh, the clutter. Uh, do you have uh, uh, recommendations for that, to uh, get those uh, big uh, chunks out of the template, or just use variables in your preprocesses? So actually, the many of the modules that I show, like at the end as extra modules, their purpose is to just be wrappers around a lot of you know, filters and functions. So for example, uh, there is one called field value. Usually you will go like name of the field dot zero dot something dot whatever. Uh, this field value module will actually just like pipe field value and you get the result. Okay. Pipe field label and you get the result. So these modules are, are you know, aimed to do exactly what you say. Instead of having this long chain of, of you know, going deep or applying filters, you have one module that provides one filter function, and that is a wrapper for something else. Yeah, so because otherwise you lo lose the HTML uh, yeah. vision. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, there is, it, it becomes less readable. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Any other question, comment, suggestion? Well, if not, uh, just a reminder, I have some stickers on the table you can Pick some and please uh, fill out a survey for feedback and come to the Sprints on Friday. Thank you very much for your time.